just holding it, holding it in. Right. Yeah. That's how amazing. wise, how wise you are, and how wise your grandma is to encourage that. Mm -hmm. You know it is, mm -hmm. because so many times people aren't talking about no. cancer. No. They don't want to, or they feel that they're going like to upset really somebody else. And it's okay if you start crying. Yeah, of course. It is. Right. It is. Because sometimes it's scary. Yeah. 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 So. A lot of it is scary. But and when the yeah. guy in first grade died, like there was this guy in my class that was like, um, like really tough, and he acted all tough, and even he started crying. Yeah, right. It's okay to cry. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's okay even if you're a boy and you cry. That's right. See, that's kind of new because most of the the guys we knew uh, grew up at a different time. They did. My you know, and and your grandpa is a lot like Jack. They grew up in a business where men are men, and yeah. they're tough, and they're That's strong. Right. That's and right. And you get up at 5 a.m., and you get out on that job no matter how you feel. That's right. He got up really early this morning to go to the meeting. Yes, he did. Yeah. He did. And, 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 it's, and it's good because when, when your grandpa got diagnosed, he didn't know anything about this kind mm -hmm. of cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's part of what makes it's it so like so new, scary. and then it like yeah. scares you. It does. That's right. Yeah, we were in a fog for a while when he first, um, you know, told us we were going to stay in out here to do some more tests. And I thought, well, why and how and you know now what? So my daughter left with the three little girls, and then Phil and I continued to stay here and go through all the testing. But I mean, I was in a fog literally for a month. And then when I found out about um, Arizona, in fact, it was JC who told us about it. She was speaking. Um, oh yeah, I've been four years ago, I think it was. Yeah. The first or second one that you had. Yeah, right. And JC said, you know, you, it might help you to go to one of these support, um, you know, groups. Uh, yeah, and right. And she said, there's one here in Arizona, and so she sent us to our very first one, and that's yeah. how we hooked up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that also one of the really important things is when you at least find out that there is help that right. there are people who really know what you're going through and like the doctors try to help it so it like becomes like better and i saw this movie called the, La the last song and miley cyrus was like the main character and he told his doctors to like stop giving the medicine because my kid had the thing and then he like um, like when he was walking to go get a flashlight, um, he fell and couldn't move his leg. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think you know that what you're saying is really important is that we learn that, you know, some people have, you know, the kind of cancer that will, you know, eventually, m you know, maybe they'll die, but, but yeah, that like there's a lot. Up. Yeah, but also that, you know, people like, uncle like your dad that there's really good treatment now mm -hmm. that wasn't around years right. ago mm -hmm. and good. that's what's that's what's really helpful and like you said when you come to you know like a program like this and you see all the people right and you realize we're not the only ones no you're not alone in this that's no for sure. no there's lots of other people that go through it too well, yeah. and cancer used to be a real scary word, but like I said, now we live in a society where you hear about it all the time, and you live with cancer. Yes, you know, you it's do. not the death sentence it used to be. So, uh, you know, to me, that's, and Bill's attitude has been, you know, phenomenal to me because he's so upbeat all the time and is uh, positive. Well, I was always the one that was kind of like, now what do we do? And let's, you know, get everything in order. And mm -hmm. I just feel like I had a lot on my shoulders and I thought the myeloma, Arizona myeloma was going to help me more than it did him mm -hmm. because I needed the information because he was secure. And, um, well, I think it's because, again, this is kind of how some men work or yeah. operate. Right. I mean, Jack was the same way. The more information he had, he felt he could handle that. Yes. But it was right. really us who had to handle a lot of the emotional. Exactly. Right. And also, and this is something your grandma does and I have to do, is they sometimes don't really want to face the fact that they have to take care of themselves, that they can't keep running all the time. Right. And, you know, how to 
you know, kind of slow down a little. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I was the one that said we have to make out our will. We yeah, have things right. that we have to do. We have responsibilities. Yeah. And it was like, well, yeah, I know. We'll do that. We'll do that. And yeah. then I said, no, we, we really have to, you know, we have to take care of that. Right. But on the other hand, once you do, there's a certain sense of relief of, okay, you know, because we know that we often have to take care of a lot of those details, and exactly. it's, you know, pretty overwhelming. It is. It so, is. Right. Uh, and you know what's really wonderful is I see that your daughter, your son, your grandchildren, they're there. Mm. They know, and they want to be there and, and help. Right. And I was saying to David that something that I find wonderful is that you're a really close family, and mm -hmm. You know, you've had other challenges to go through with, you know, their families and right. so on. and that's important. And that's you're there for right. each other. That's right. Yeah, right. yeah we help um, our daddy and papa a lot because, like, um, like sometimes um, if, like, you or somebody else was talking and, like, papa couldn't hear it because, you know, his hearing, we would like always repeat it to him. Right, so he can hear you. Yeah, because right. he, his hearing. His hearing is going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh well. Yeah, yeah. But that's very important, the, yeah. the family support is. And, and Billy's family, I'm from a very close family, and Bill's family is extremely close. Yeah. And his sister being the nurse, I think he talked to her daily. He just needs some reassurance from oh, that's someone so that he knew wonderful. in the medical field. Oh, yeah. And so Daddy. his sister was a, was a blessing. Oh, and that's wonderful. Daddy. Now yeah. that you're moving, like you're having a house in Wheaton now, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be able to start helping you a lot because all we got to do is like walk a mile down the prairie That's path. right. Right. Really? Are you going to move into a place closer to? Yeah. Yes. She's only going to live like a mi five minutes away from us. Mm -hmm. <gasps> wow. Yes. Well, we're not moved in though. We're not yeah, um, but fully it's moved yeah. in. You could like still sleep there and stuff, but yeah. you don't have like all the no. furniture yet. But that's so good. That's outside of Chicago. Yeah, in the yeah. suburbs. In the suburbs. You're saying something that's very important and that I personally haven't had because my family is pretty scattered. Mm -hmm. But that is something that is such a wise thing to do, that mm -hmm. you can be there for your daughter and the grandchildren exactly. and be able to be together, and that they're there for you too. Right. And uh, I think it helps Bill because he knows that he feels better about you being together. Yes. Um, and I think that makes him feel more secure it too. Does. And uh, we, we know that that's important, is in a way, we, we take a lot of the burden off of them by when we're taking care of ourselves because right. Jack's whole thing about you know when he was in the hospital with the heart problem mm -hmm. was he felt so guilty because he kept saying well you have all this to do for the conference and you have to be here and everything and I said but this is where I want to be right you know yeah um, but the other side of it he also knew that if you know because others were helping out that if they helped us you know, that gave me a little more freedom and time to be able to be with him. Exactly. And, you know, so it's a lot more for us, but on the other hand, you know, it's a way that we help them when we get help for ourselves, that's right. too. Right. And I think that's hardest for us caregivers is we take care of everything. Now, here, look at yeah, you. I know. And <laughs> But, you know, that, you know, you were saying, you know, here you are. And I, when I saw him pushing you in the wheelchair, I found that very poignant because mm -hmm. that had happened to me four years ago, mm -hmm. and it was so awful for Jack because he felt so helpless. Yeah, it was worse for him. Right, because he didn't know how to help. Right, and I'll say this to everyone: <laughs> he wasn't real good at it. I mean, he kept <laughs> asking me, "Where is this yeah. in the kitchen? Where is that?" And I'd be wheeling myself in to tell him or using my walker. Exactly. To, and I would think it'd be easier if I did. But then I said, no, mm -hmm. I have to let him do this. Right. Yeah. As frustrating yeah, as it is. And like the family, like <laughs> we all just like the main part of the family just like all got a, like all got together. Like today was our last day and like everybody was pitching in, um, like pushing Nani. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, <coughs> I, I agree with you, Barbara. We, I think Bill has really um, 
come full circle as far as learning how to operate in like the kitchen and sitting in the other room and listening to him trying to find things and being in camp. Well, not, well now that my mom's going to be here, she yes, has a big yes. worry. Now my daughter will be here this week. In the okay. kitchen. Yes, yeah, so yeah. she'll be here this week to help out. But um, yeah, Bill, Bill, I think you realized what the caregiver does when the role was reversed. All of a sudden, he was the caregiver, you know, mm -hmm. for me. And um, even though mine's a temporary thing, and, and he, in the back of his mind, knows that he is um, kind of a micromanager because of his position. You know, he's used yes. to delegating. That's and right. when he, um, after we found out he had the myeloma, and same thing, the first thing he wanted to do was get all his papers in order, you know, mm -hmm. so we did the will and everything. And then he wanted to make sure that um, if something happened to him, Mm -hmm. that um, I would have, um, you know, security as far as, um, you know, not having to worry about selling this house or selling that house. And that's why he said, um, let's build a home in Illinois because that's where you're going to go back to because right now we're yeah, in Maryland. It's your roots. And yeah. he said, you need to be in your family. And he said, and I you know there's seven children. I have six sisters. And he said, you have to be, um, you know, looking after each other. He says, and mm -hmm. if I'm not here, he says, I want you to make sure that you and your sisters are all together. And you know, I said, and your sister too, because I'm, of course, she's like my seventh one. So he he's putting everything in order. Mm -hmm. So that makes him feel, um, yeah, you know, like. Well, I think it's not t not to have to feel out of control. Yes. And Jack does the same thing. Yes. He has to plan everything. Yes. He has to be in charge because that's who he is. That's the nature. And. But then what happens when I wasn't able to do things, I think what he also realized is how much of the other pieces I had taken off of his shoulders, yes. you know, kind of protecting him from the stress. Right, and, right. You know, trying to, and talking to people and uh, talking, finding out right. things and so on. And I think when now you're in the situation of needing help, mm -hmm. uh, I think they realize how much we do. That exactly. they never even think about, uh, that they can count on. Right. And suddenly, that's not there. No. So it's, yeah. it, it, again, uh, as caregivers, we do so much. We don't even think about all the things we do. It's, no, we don't. It's we don't. not like it's not like it's how you do it. It's about like the thought that counts. The person will like oh, it like oh. either either way because you did it for them, and it, and yeah. if they're like a special part of your life, you'll love it. At, Either way. Either way. You don't mind doing it. You're love so it. right. You have a lot of wisdom <laughs> for a young person. You truly do. And I think, sadly, you've had to learn that because you mm -hmm. see what's going on with the people you love. Right. That they're going through some really difficult times. Mm -hmm. And that we all have to pull together. We do. And, and as yeah. soon as I, like, heard she um, broke her ankle, I was, like, all worried. I'm like, Mom, is not going to be okay? When are we going to see her? When are we going <laughs> to see her? And I'm okay. Yeah, and she also sent me a picture, so I'm like, oh, okay, she's okay. Yeah. Aww. Aww. How very special. Yeah. You, gi you give your grandparents a lot of joy. They do. They do. They and do. all the children do. Yeah. That's why we don't see them enough, and we need to That's get back. So now that we have a place back yeah. in Illinois, we can go back there and visit with them more often. And also they're close enough that they can come over and stay overnight sometimes. And those are the kind of fun special times of taking turns visiting Nana and Papa, That's right? That's what I've yeah. missed out on. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's funny because I didn't even know this and I have a bag that says traveling to grandma's house. Yeah, <laughs> right. Now you can use it. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think, you know, Pat, one of the things that I've learned, and that's why I started Arizona Myeloma Network, is that so many times people forget about the caregivers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of attention paid to the person who is the patient. Exactly. And I was saying today in the in the little workshop we had that for the first few years I was married because Jack was diagnosed a month before we got married, people would call up and the first thing they would say to me after hello was, how's Jack? Exactly, right. No one ever even <laughs> said, how are you? Yeah, exactly. And it wasn't until I broke my hip, which is only four years ago, I mean, I've been through 16 years yeah, of right. listening to how's Jack, how's Jack, yeah. is finally somebody Turn called turn. up and, and, <laughs> and they said to Jack, how's Barbara? <laughs> And, and it was such a novel thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not so much that you resent it or no, whatever. No. It's just that you, 